A city's fleet of public transit vehicles might include standard buses, low-floor buses, or both. Low-floor buses have a special kneeling feature. When they pull up to the bus stop, they can mechanically lower themselves to curb height to make boarding easier for children, senior citizens, and handicapped people. This low-floor bus is 12.2 meters long and can carry more than 80 passengers. To build the bus's internal structure, workers put stainless steel bars into a press. It applies between 80 and 100 tons of pressure, bending them to the required shape. Workers assemble the structural pieces on a support frame called an assembly jig. They use an electronic inspection arm to verify their work. Once they've assembled the roof structure and the side structures, they bring them together for welding. Everything goes on a rotating jig. It turns like a giant rotisserie, giving workers easy access to whatever part of the bus they need to weld. When the welding is finished, they turn the bus right side up. They put the structure on a dolly and release it from the jig so that they can move it down the production line. Meanwhile, the stainless steel structure for the floor of the bus takes shape. Once that's complete, it's back onto the rotating assembly jig to weld it to the rest of the structure. This bus factory uses stainless steel because it stands up well to corrosion. Transit systems need to keep these buses running full-time for up to 20 years. Less rusting means fewer expensive and time-consuming repairs. Workers now move the completed structure to another part of the factory where they spray the underframe and lower section with a black anti-abrasion coating. This protects against the noise and damage that stones and other road debris cause when they hit the bottom of the bus. Next, workers apply high strength glue to the floor structure and lay down a subfloor. Then they drive in screws for reinforcement. Now they turn the bus upside down to install four tanks of compressed air under the roof. Three are for the brake systems, the fourth for the doors and other mechanisms. Melamine ceiling panels hide everything that's under the roof. Next, the engine's radiator goes in at the rear of the bus. Then workers turn the bus right side up again and lay down a waterproof vinyl floor covering that's specially designed to withstand heavy-duty transit use. They cover the sides and roof with fiberglass panels. To prevent corrosion, workers use glue rather than screws or rivets. Then they attach the fiberglass front of the bus to the rest. The bus's low-emission diesel engine arrives at the factory already assembled. Workers attach it to the transmission and drive shaft in the engine compartment. Buses without air conditioning have sliding windows that open widely. On air-conditioned buses, just a small top section opens. The upholstery on the molded fiberglass seats is a velour-like fabric woven onto a strong canvas, then glued onto a fiberglass insert. This construction makes it impossible for vandals to slash the seat with a knife. Workers install the driver's seat, the steering wheel, and all the controls, including the toggle switch that activates the kneeling feature. This bus also has a ramp for wheelchairs. A safety system locks the accelerator pedal and applies the brakes to prevent the bus from moving when the ramp or kneeling features are in operation. The finished bus undergoes a half-hour water infiltration test with all the systems running. This ensures there are no leaks. At every phase of production, the factory does a quality control inspection, checking everything from mechanical safety to finishings right down to the tiniest of details.